back. Mike McClintock's here from the Boone County Extension Service, and thank you so much for being here. Howdy. Thanks, thanks for having me. Good. Thanks we had a big event last weekend with the uh, Master Gardeners. Yes, we did. It was a huge event, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, thank everybody in the community. Harrison, Boone County, it was a huge success. Mm -hmm. I've been told that it was probably one of the largest conventions Wonderful. that Harrison's been able to hold. The town was great, the community was great, the county was great, and it was well, you know, a huge with the, with the addition of the, uh, of the uh, convention center downtown, it's, it's, uh, it, it really attracts that kind of mm -hmm. uh, business, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Yeah. It, um, we, you know, when you have that many people in one area, and they're predominantly volunteers, um, and a lot of them are retirees, and um, sometimes they have special requirements and everything. We evaluate all of our events mm -hmm. with written evaluations. And I was fortunate enough to take them up on Saturday, so I scanned a lot of them. When we, we do not have the official results, but Harrison got glowing reviews. Wonderful. Really good, good. Uh, practically 100% of them were, enjoyed their stay. They rated it as excellent and good. The hospitality, they made lots of comments about how nice we are in Harrison, how mm -hmm. beautiful our city is. Many of them did not realize, they were from all over the state, didn't have passed through Harrison on their way to Branson or mm -hmm. Eureka Springs, but have never stopped. Mm -hmm. And this gave them the opportunity to see our town and see our square and, and experience our hospitality. Mm -hmm and many of them said that they will be coming back to that's vacation. That's very favorable. So that's, that's wonderful. Excellent. And that, that is true, and that's a point that we need, probably need to bring up, is, is when people come through here, that they just see the bypass. Right. They right. know the Harrison's there, but they don't have time else. to come in. If we can get them to slow down yeah. and right. experience we have something County here, and Harrison, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, very, they talked about the pristine atmosphere and everything that we had to offer as far as relaxation, and they enjoyed the slower pace. Mm -hmm. But 100% of them talked about, commented about our hospitality and how nice people were all around the town, not just us at the community, at the Duran Center. That's so good, good. It was really outstanding. Great. Now, what do you want to talk about today? <clears throat> oh, I, I guess we could talk a little bit about the weather. Okay. Um, I'm receiving, Hi. I'm inundated with phone calls with gardening and the weather and farming and what all this is going to mean to us. Um, you know, we started out the spring with cool, wet weather. Mm -hmm. uh, lawns have suffered, mm -hmm. uh, landscaping has suffered, and it's mostly due to the weather. We've lost a lot of trees from last year due to the drought and the, mm -hmm. heat, and the heat last mm -hmm. fall. Um, and we have an overabundance of water right now, don't we? I mean, it's sub, drying out now. Subsurface, but, but in the past yeah. two weeks, we have evaporated. I know, my lawn is turning rate. brown a little yes, bit. Yes, and it will. Uh, especially if you have cool season grasses, if your lawn is, mm -hmm. is a cool season grass like fescue. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the fescue thinks it's August right now. And because of the weather conditions. Because right. of the weather conditions. So it's just been and, such yeah. a shock. If two and a half weeks ago, my wife and I were sitting on the porch in sweaters drinking our coffee. Right. Where we sit every right, morning. Right. And now it's almost unbearable. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Um, this grass is really, and our lawns are really taking a beating. But people need to realize there's a lot of fungus. If you have patches in your lawn, mm -hmm. you're probably experiencing some lawn funguses that happened this spring. And if people water every day, and if they water <laughs> at night, they're just going to exacerbate the problem. Now, when you say patches, what are, what are you looking what? for? It'll be like a little brown patch. And, okay. Um, I know what you're talking about. Right, then. and if yeah. you have those patches in, especially your cool season grass, and I have seen it in some of the Bermuda grass lawns, mm -hmm. um, that's a fungus, and <laughs> uh, it can get worse. Um, they need to change probably some of their cultural practices, uh, contact a professional lawn care person, or in many cases they can handle it themselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do not realize that we have free diagnostic services for all of your landscape material. Um, I, we bring this material in uh, many, many times. I, I've already sent off probably 50 samples this wow. year. And you're offering people to bring in their samples? Yes, yes. Okay. Free of charge. The U of A Division of Agriculture does this free. I'm one of the few states that do that. I send this, even if I know what it is, I usually send it off to our, our plant pathologist at the University of Arkansas probably one of the most intelligent people I have ever met in my life. 
very sharp, very nice. It's a nice. humbling experience, isn't it? Yes, very much so. <laughs> I'm not very smart. You know, I have a lot of people fooled sometimes, mm -hmm. but uh, she uh, usually gets that back in the next day with all the recommendations and... Um, Gives you kind of diagnostic of yes, what to do. Yes, right. Okay. And then I can take it and I work with, say if you called in and I'll call you back, we'll get you lined up on what you need to do. And um, many, many people do not realize that we offer that, but um, seems to be on the increase. People mm -hmm. are learning more about what we have to offer them. So that's at lawns. What about gardens? What kind of, what's okay. the question and you're getting now? <clears throat> gardens, um, if you have fruit trees, you know, most of our fruit trees look pretty good right now. Mm -hmm. uh, our blueberries, we're going to have a fantastic crop. People need to be watering their blueberries to make them, uh, to give them an ability to go ahead and finish up making their when fruit. When is the best time during the day to water? Does it matter? Or the best it... time is early in the morning. Okay. That way, if the plants have a, a chance to get that water and dry it up off the leaves, probably the worst time is at night because mm. those plants will stay wet. Like last night, it got down to about 61, 62. Mm -hmm. They stay moist all night. Excessive moisture, not just with the mm -hmm. dew, mm -hmm. and this gives, that's a perfect environment for these funguses oh, okay. to grow in. Okay. So if you But it's wet in the morning. I mean, the, the, I walk to feed my goats, and it's, I mean, the yeah, grass is wet. Yeah, but it, there's a difference. You okay. know, there's a difference all It's not all in night. the ground, though. It's probably right. on it, the top. Yeah. So if you want to water, usually it's best to water once a week and water deep. And okay. not water every day. Some people, even during a drought period, they'll water daily and they uh -huh. think they're helping, mm -hmm. and they'll actually kill some of their plants because they're waterlogged. They're actually drowning these plants yeah. because the roots need to breathe. They're actually breathing oxygen mm -hmm. underneath the ground too. Mm -hmm. So um, these plants need the ability to breathe, and they they drown them. <laughs> uh, our vegetable gardens and our farmers market. Um, our, I think most of our gardens are three weeks behind due to the weather. Now they're being hammered with August temperatures. I looked mm. at some uh, data the other day, day before yesterday, and I think we're running 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Mm. Wow. Um, that's causing the evaporation. Uh, what, the, does, what does that do for a, for a crop that, that uh, uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is, um, you, you, you've got something that you, you plant maybe in the hotter part of the season. Should you be planting that now or? or you sh sh well, no, you need to stay on your yearly schedule because okay. this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. It's just um, the, what we have to look at now, you know, we, we don't have many potato, uh, excuse me, tomatoes out there yet. Mm -hmm. The problem with tomato plants is once the nighttime temperatures stay at 75 degrees and 90 plus 95 degrees during the day mm -hmm. that we're flirting with, They'll set blossom, but they won't set fruit. And none of us have fresh tomatoes yet. Right. And if yeah. this was to increase and prolong, then essentially we all. wouldn't get very many tomatoes yeah, okay. this summer. A lot of our plants react to that nighttime temperature. They need a chance to cool off. Their roots and the ground mm -hmm. needs a chance to cool <laughs> off. And probably the best cultural practice that people could be thinking about right now is mulch. Mul mulching is a natural way for weed control. It also keeps the plant's roots cool and slows down evaporation mm -hmm. from losing moisture. So take your grass clippings and Absolutely. spread it around the The one plants. thing that you need to be careful of with mulch, fresh material goes through a heat. Um, if you take your fresh grass clippings and you put them around plants mm -hmm. and the ground's already hot and it goes through that heat, it could be detrimental. It's much better to make you a little compost pile over in the corner of the mm -hmm. yard somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let that go but through that, that heat. Slowly start working its its way into compost. So you're saying compost. that the, the dead air causes a heat? Or, it's or the decomposition. The decomposition yes. causes okay. right. the heat. Cause right. Okay. Uh, have you ever heard of wet hay causing a fire right, in a right. barn? Yeah. Same thing. Mm -hmm. It's just not ready to, um, to be baled up. And you can actually see some of these uh, uh, lawn refuse heaps will actually smoke, you know, I mean, wow. and there's wow. some of them, you know, you stick your hand in there and it's approaching 160 degrees. So you how, wouldn't. I was gonna, how long does it take for a compost pile to get to that perfect? Well, it all depends on whether you want to turn it every day. If you want to add water, there's, there's all kinds of formulas. Okay. Myself, I don't have time. So I have like three different piles. And as I build one up, the others are, are composting yeah. mm -hmm. and so 
that's the way I do it. it. Usually you can produce compost in two to three months, sometimes six months, if you're turning it. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it's really good stuff. Mm -hmm. A good thing um, is straw. There's a couple of uh, businesses in town that sell straw that is weed free. And you can take four layers of newspaper mm -hmm. and um, put the newspaper down on the bare ground. It's going to stop any of the germination that's going on and cover it with two to three inches of straw or some type of some type of already prepared mulch mm -hmm. and um, really do a good job mm -hmm. and really will help your plants. Mm -hmm. Okay. The one thing I want to caution people too, um, many people get mulch from uh, the, the trucks that are going around the county and they're working on the power lines right. and they're working in people's yards. If you get this fresh mulch out of, off of this truck and someone has a fungus in their yard or on their trees or whatever, mm -hmm. and it does not go through that heat, you know, it needs about 130 degrees to start killing some of these funguses and bacteria. You put it around your plants, now you have automatically inoculated your plants with this same material. So people need to be aware of that, right, you know. For and, sure. and it's just basic cultural practice. And you have a lot of that information down oh, yes. at the office there. Yes. What sure were you located for people We're don't on know. Industrial Park Road, um, you, you, behind the Farm Bureau Insurance Building. It's mm -hmm. about the third building on the left as you're headed mm -hmm. toward the post office. Okay. Now you have, I, want, I know you wanted to touch on a couple of 4-H things, is that right? Or uh, you have to... Yes, um, I'd like to talk about our facility. I think Nita's been on here um, talking about the facility in the past and it's on our 40 acres up above North Arkansas College. Uh, we're in the process of we're real close to seeding the uh, grass on the cross-country course walking trail that's, that we're in partnership with North Arkansas College and mm -hmm. Harrison Rex Department. And we're about to seed that and get that all ready. Um, it's really looking good. If anybody wants to see what community spirit and donations and things that can be done, they can drive up past North Arkansas College. Uh, on campus drive and they can see where we're angle bladed and all that okay. kind of stuff. Very excited about mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. We plan on um, some of our plans is to get a, a greenhouse going for the master gardeners, uh, our shooting sports range for this youth shooting sports program that we have, our walking trails with outdoor classrooms. So it's starting to really pick up speed. Awesome. So we're really excited about That's that. That's good. good. Sounds great. Yes. Well, we appreciate you coming by. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, of course, we want you to come back because there's uh, the seasons change, and uh, as they change, we'll need to get some uh, new answers from you. Good. Be glad to. And we appreciate you again for being Thank here. You. We're going to take Thank a you. break, and Emily McCormick's going to be here from Turpentine Creek. A powwow's going on. She'll tell us all about that. Stick around. Stay with us. We'll be right back.